No, it's, you know, who are we going to throw under the bus? And there's one dude still sitting there working. You! Come here, what's your name? (laughs) (laughs) You're listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast, where HIPAA and humor collide to make learning fun. Your delightful hosts are Donna Grindle and David Sims. Relax, HIPAA help is on the way. This is Valerie Williams from Arthritis and Rheumatology of Georgia in Atlanta, Georgia. And you are listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast. Thank you for the intro. I am David Sims of HIPAA for MSPs and Security First IT. And joining me is Donna Grindle of Carden. Hello, Donna. That was an exciting way to say Carden. Like Carden. You're, you're so excited that, that I'm joining you today, am, unlike other Fridays. Yeah, I am super excited to have you on as a guest. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. After this, we're recording. It, 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 we're being a guest on a podcast that's uh, out of Canada. They have a very similar thing, and we're supposed to be the guest. And it's a podcast where every episode they have a guest, and that means we had homework to do. And David was perfuffled. <laughs> yeah, it was like doing a stinking homework. really we don't we don't he doesn't do homework for ours you know so i've never in my life done homework (laughs) okay that answers so many questions i start now so overrated Uh, there you go uh, but yeah what one thing that i don't know that you remember but doing two podcast recordings back to back is exhausting so i'm (laughs) you're gonna like crash this afternoon (laughs) I can't. I got back to back things all day. So, you know, I, yeah. I'm getting too old for this, though. It's funny because, um, my, you know, my wife has a podcast and she, she did like three recordings in a day, not back to back, but just in one day. This is probably a month or two ago. And she was like, that is the last time I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, by yeah. that third one, you're like, let's just get this over with. Uh huh. <laughs> Yeah, everybody that, that, uh, you know, oh, podcasting is the hot thing. Well, we've been doing it since before that. But um, that thinks it's easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're uh, in for a rude awakening. (laughs) Yeah, it's a lot if you you do it right. (laughs) Yeah, and I'm sure we could do so much more and actually have ours, you know, with production and a lot more music and all this other stuff. And, uh you know, if you're you're interested in us doing that, donate. <laughs> we'll <laughs> tell you what it's going to cost us. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, let's get to something that people are here to listen to, not us whine. Oh man. Okay. Oh man. <laughs> all right. So uh, today we're going to be talking about why security patching matters because you know mm-hmm. something called Windows Seven died this week. <laughs> And then Windows 10 has a yeah. big gaping hole this week all at the same time. Yeah, all at the same time. So it's like, hey, everybody, you've got to go to Windows 10. And then at the same time, <laughs> you're like, hey, hey everybody. Everybody. On, <laughs> everybody on Windows 10. There's a big problem. And it's like, <laughs> wait a minute. You, but you told me I, I had to move to 10 because it was more secure than 7. Now you're telling me 10 has got this big hole in it. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Welcome to our world. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, we're, so we're going to talk about that because you know there's still questions about end of life for Windows Seven, which is you know same thing we heard a few years ago when XP died. Yeah. And, uh, so yeah. we'll go back over all that and discuss why it matters to everyone, and um, also why when you start talking about patching, oftentimes even the IT folks don't really do it as they should, or they don't explain it to the client like they should, or, or you know, is there all kind of mysterious stuff around it? Oh well, yeah, I mean, there you're making assumptions, and we know about that. Mm-hmm. You cannot assume that this is taken care of. True. So before we dive into all that, mm-hmm. let's talk about the boot camp. That's right. Yep. So the March hip a boot camp. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> hip boot camp dot com. <laughs> uh, so our 2020 spring session, because there will only be two this year and there probably only will be one on the East coast still in talks on the West coast ish. 
Yeah, but it's looking good. Uh, hopefully by the end of January, I will know dates in place. Great. So um, for this for this side of the coast, <laughs> uh, March 24, 25, 26 are your dates. That's when it's going to be. It's going to be in Tucker, Georgia, uh, right, right outside uh, Donna's A beautiful backyard. suburb of Atlanta. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's always uh, always a fun time there, and uh, we already have people buying seats, and it is super limited because we definitely want to have a very intimate uh, yes. time with you. <laughs> yeah, we probably sold about a third already. Yep. So uh, so you so. better get those, and uh, we still have the early bird pricing, right? Yep, until February 23rd, 24th, somewhere right there. It's on the website. So you can go to thehippabootcamp.com. I almost really? forgot. I don't know. Try to get it. It's your again. job. <laughs> thehippabootcamp.com. Oh, <laughs> we have to do this. We have to practice as we record. So <laughs> go there, get the information, and register. There's early bird discounts. There's discounts for multiple people. And um, give us a call or uh, email us if you have any questions. We tend to try to answer them. Sure enough. And uh, we've gotten a couple of listener questions recently that I haven't had time to get on because January is just really kicking my booty. (laughs) But we will... Definitely respond as soon as possible. Looking forward to it because we yes. love our boot camps. They're fun until we pass out. <laughs> yep. Definitely fun. All right. Mm-hmm. Anything else? Any other announcements? Uh, no. All right. Good deal. So <laughs> let's hear a word from our two sponsors and then we'll get on with it. Cybercrime is a multi billion dollar industry and in growing. How confident are you that your computer network can withstand a cyber attack? Can you afford to take the chance that what you have today will protect you? Call us and find out if the cybersecurity in your business is something you should be concerned about or if you can rest easy knowing your business is protected. Visit us online at securityfirstit.com. That's securityfirstit.com. And schedule a time to talk. Did you know that 83% of healthcare organizations report a strong negative impact to their bottom line after a data breach? So many doctors think that they're HIPAA compliant have nothing to worry about. Many of those organizations thought the same thing before it happened to them. Call Cardin today at 678-292-5001 so they can assess your practice and help ensure you are protected and prepared. Visit CardinHQ.com to learn more. Yes, we really thank our awesome sponsors. <laughs> I know. Without them, what will we do? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so well, our, we do uh, appreciate folks that have gone and signed up uh, on the donor page. We really oh, yeah. appreciate you guys. Absolutely. And we appreciate the folks that have uh, done some new reviews on uh, Apple Podcast and some other areas. So please continue to uh, give us those uh, um, plugs because we need all the help we can get, clearly. Yeah, and the reviews, I mean, that's kind of like, hey, thank you. <laughs> We're I glad know. you told us something. You know, yeah, Usually Donna calls me, it'd be like midnight. Hey, we got a review. <laughs> <laughs> when I stumble upon them, yes. Yeah. It's so. usually midnight when I'm doing my podcast work. Yeah, no, but we do appreciate the reviews. They, they definitely let us know that. I mean, we know people are listening. We see stats, but it's always fun to get some feedback about, hey, I enjoyed it, and it's fun to listen to, and I learned something. I always love the ones that's like, yeah, I don't really do anything with HIPAA. I just like listening to the entertainment and the security stuff. <laughs> yeah, we do have those, too. So yep, bring your friends. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's talk about why patching, security patching in particular, why does it even matter? Yeah, it means more than most people think, uh, and that that goes for both technical people and non-technical people. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of technical people that don't take the time to understand the big picture, but that's, you know, 
you know, that's that's always a difference anyway. So mm-hmm. really and truly, w- what is – how do you explain patching, David? Uh, I mean, you know, typically I talk about, well, it's, it's updating the software, but it's updating the software to f- – to not give you more features, but to fix problems and holes and things that people can use to break things or to do other malicious stuff, like hack into your system. So, you know, it's updates that fix very big problems with your software. You need to come up with some analogy of patching your clothes. <laughs> patching then, your clothes. The yeah. potholes in the road. You know, if yeah, somebody doesn't patch go. the potholes, it'll tear stuff up. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, you know, there's a little bit of dust versus there's a big gaping hole. Two different things. Yeah. And, you know, you swerve around them, whereas the bad guys are looking for those holes so they can make your drive worse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's not a very good one. We got to we gotta find a really good analogy for it because, you know, that's fun, number one. But. It'll help people, but the bottom line is the software has a problem, a bug in it. Mm -hmm. And with the bug, sometimes it's just, hey, when I click here, it goes over there. And it should really go left instead of right. That That is, you know, pretty simple stuff, but those could be in a patch. It's the ones that involve a security update that, absolutely need to be installed Mm -hmm. and sometimes you'll get a patch and it's got a security thing and then a whole bunch of things that don't matter right you know so much so there's there's a lot of confusion about it so that's why i thought since everybody's talking about it Mm -hmm. and and by the time this comes out if you have not done handled and made sure that your patches for this Windows 10 thing have been handled, now would be the time to do it. And I mean, like, this will come out in two weeks. So uh, pull over right now, call somebody and say, let's have a meeting. I mean, it's (laughs) it's that big of a deal. But I thought first we would uh, answer a question that we've been getting a lot of that, uh, oh, well, my IT company says it's not a big deal to, you know, don't worry about not having your Windows 7 upgraded. HIPAA doesn't say anything about it. Yeah, there's nothing in the HIPAA regulation about Windows 7 specifically. That is, cr- that is correct. <laughs> so they're not lying to you on that. However, <laughs> <laughs> they are uninformed or misinformed about what HIPAA says about patching. Yeah, I and, actually remember somebody saying that when XP happened. Like, yeah. show me where HIPAA says that you have to upgrade Windows XP. Yeah. I was like, are you kidding me? Really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that is goes back to the sign of somebody that doesn't really understand why we're doing this. <laughs> you know, it's they, they're looking for a checklist. Check the box. There ain't no box that says Windows XP. Yep. Which is what prompted me to write the article back in 2014. Prior to the podcast, I was writing a regular book blog and um those old blog posters are out on cardinhq.com some of them still apply greatly and it was my sense of humor back then was no different than it is now (laughs) there's some funny stuff in there but the bottom line is back then i had the same problem that people said show me where hipaa says so i said all right that's what you asked for here's what we're going to give you And when we had the question just this week, somebody said, hey, our client needs us to tell them we're a (laughs) HIPAA. Same thing. And I'm like, here, 2014, hadn't changed. Just (laughs) wherever it says XP, replace it with seven. Yeah. So here's the part, uh, and and the information's on the website, so you have the reference. And as we teach in the boot camp, you have to go to the law when you're having these conversations. Because what's in HIPAA and HIPAA doesn't say this and HIPAA does say that, you got to go to the law to define what HIPAA says anytime you're having that conversation. Right. So in the HIPAA security rule, it says in 164.306A2, one must protect against any reasonably anticipated threats 
or hazards to the security or integrity of such information, and that's you know referring to PHI. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay? and in these days, I think you can say pretty safely that ransomware is reasonably anticipated threat. <laughs> yeah, well, there's all kinds of you know we we've talked and talked and talked about the increase of cybercrime and how these vulnerabilities that are out there are being used and unpatched systems and. Really, the only thing you have to say to that is Equifax, <laughs> yeah, really. uh, WannaCry. You know, <laughs> th- there's a long list of examples where, you know, there were patches available, they weren't loaded, and it caused a major data breach. So you can't tell me, you know, that there's not a reasonable anticipation that lack of security patches would cause a data breach. Mm-hmm. We've seen it happen. Yeah, we. It's, it's everybody knows it. So that would make it a reasonably anticipated threat that if I don't have them, if I'm using unsupported software, there's a threat there, right? I would say so. It's a hazard to the security or integrity of our information. And just in case that wasn't enough, there's another part under 164.308A5IB. Protection for malicious software. Mm -hmm. And you must have, it's addressable, so it doesn't tell you specifically how to do it, but it says you need to define how you're going to do it and why you think it handles your reasonably anticipated threats. Yeah. Well, I always love the addressable ones because, you know, for people that do the check the box stuff, this throws them sideways. And you can always tell because they always say, say, HIPAA is so ambiguous. I'm like, yeah, it's because you're doing check the box. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That that's a key. Anybody that thinks HIPAA's not clear, they're doing check the box. Because it's on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. You don't really want it to specifically tell you <laughs> what software to use. Right. So and in fact, protection from malicious software, most people think, okay, that means antivirus. That's not what the law says. What the law says is that you must have procedures for guarding against, detecting, and reporting malicious software. Ooh. Ha, 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 ha. I mean, just uh, the last one alone, a lot of people dropped the ball on that. Yeah. So procedures for guarding against. You know, that's not, that not, uh, mm -mm. antivirus does a lot of that stuff, but that's what a lot of people equate that to. So what does the law say is very different than what there is a lot of assumptions about, right? Yeah, yeah, and I see a ton of IT people who say, all you got to have is antivirus. All you got to have is security best practices. Yeah. Mm, A little bit more than that. Reasonably anticipated threats involve a few other things. Which then brings us to, because those are addressable, then there were people making the argument, uh, okay, it's pretty easy to say you can reasonably anticipate threats due to lack of security practices. If you believe that that is unreasonable, come join us in 2020 and not 2009 or whatever, because (laughs) it's dramatically different. There's a stat I use when I'm trying to explain to when I do workforce training, and I was just doing some yesterday, and trying to explain to people why it's different because everybody's still trying to do what they've always done, but you can't. Nope. And there's a avtest.org. They track malware, and they have a chart that's up to date showing you how many different variants there are to malware how many different kinds of malware are out there so the total number and and some people is like oh well that's an old one they pull those old ones and modify them to do new things all the time Mm -hmm. so we're talking about in 2019 that statistic for the first time crossed one billion Mm. different kinds in 2011, it was 62 million. Hmm. That's huge. Yeah, that's a big difference. Yeah, in eight years. So that's why things are different. Now, that being said, you are allowed because it is addressable. You can say, okay, 
those are reasonably anticipated, but I'm going to find ways to address this. And just remember, when you're doing that, the law says you can consider very specific things when it comes to addressable. And that is in 164.306b2. And it says, in deciding which security measures to use, you must take into account the following factors. Size and complexity and capabilities of the organization. The organization's technical infrastructure, hardware, and software security capabilities. The cost of security measures. And the probability and criticality of potential risk to EPHI. Mm-hmm. So that last that number. One, that number three one, though, I mean, that's where you get most pushback, right? Yeah, well, number three is where everybody's like, well, it costs too much, so I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Well, the problem is when you've never paid anything, then when you pay something, it costs too much. <laughs> yeah. Well, but, I mean, it, the thing is, is that it's just like us saying the three rules of security. Yeah. It's not convenient. It's not optional, but it shouldn't stop you from doing your job. You've got to do all three. Mm-hmm. Well, in this case, you have to address all four. You Correct. must take into account the following factors. It doesn't say one or two of them. Yep. All of yep. them. All of them. And the last one, the probability and criticality of potential risks mm-hmm. has to be included. Well, we've just talked about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Both the probability and criticality are pretty high. Yeah. So, yes, it, you have to then figure out the other three and how they you can manage the other three in your environment. So I think that uh, to, uh, if you're purposely using an operating system or software that you know will never have security updates, I'm pretty sure these parts of HIPAA would be what OCR would reference when they're investigating you because you had a data breach due to running software that didn't have patches. Mm -hmm. In fact, and now I wish I'd looked it up, but shortly after this in the 2014, 2015, so in 2015, I want to say 2016, there was a settlement from OCR that mentioned that because they were running an unsupported operating system, i.e. Windows XP, they had a data breach, and they were one of the settlements. So, yes, there has been enforcement action for data breaches that were caused by using unsupported software. Yes, I do recall. So, can we put a period at the end of the sentence that HIPAA does care? Uh, maybe an exclamation point. <laughs> <laughs> So for all of you who may have been in this debate, if you're not getting security updates, this is where HIPAA applies. And it has more, you know, it's not just, okay, Windows 7 isn't going to get updates anymore. You're supposed to be getting security updates on everything all the time already. Yeah. And this, you know, I mentioned this, I might have been last week, mm-hmm. but, you know, I was on Facebook in a tech thread somebody's talking about software on a computer and about HIPAA compliance. You know, typically anytime that word gets thrown up, I get brought into it. And the person said, and they're, t- they're talking about CCleaner, which is software yeah. that does some cleaning up crap on your system. And they're wanting, so the person asked, is CCleaner HIPAA compliant? And the number of IT people who said CCleaner has nothing to do with HIPAA mm-hmm. was amazing. Uh, so you want to talk about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, to say that it has nothing to do with HIPAA, I mean, that that's just flat out wrong. If it's changing things on your computer, uh, you know, HIPAA isesn't about what you can and cannot run. HIPAA is about making sure that you account for security measures for PHI. So, uh, what did you say? I mean. This, well, <laughs> I mean, maybe they're right. I mean, it has nothing to do with HIPAA, as in it shouldn't be HIPAA compliant, and you shouldn't worry about that. But that's not the answer we would give. Right. Yeah, it's, I mean, if you've got something, on anything on your system, and there's a security hole in that software, and it gives somebody access to your system, then now you're looking at something that potentially could risk the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of the PHI that's on that system or that 
that that system has access to. So anything that's mm -hmm. on that system has to do with HIPAA in some form or fashion because of the data that you have either on the system or available through the system. And so all that has to be considered. Yes, you are correct. So okay. did you answer it that way? I started to answer it that way. And before I could press post, <laughs> the person who posted the question turned off commenting. And so my really? post, yeah. So my long post went nowhere and I was not going to redo it. <laughs> so I was like, that it. is weird. So I was like, I'm done. Yeah. You know, so why did you, why'd you post a question if you don't want to hear the answers? Well, I, th I think what it was is he was starting to get the same answers over and over again. And, but, you know, still oh. to turn off commenting, I'm not sure. But, you know, it's one of those times where it's like, okay, I've got, I've got 10 minutes to comment on this thing and I've got a lot of work to do. And, and then when I go to post, it goes away. It's not, it doesn't post and I can't, and I'm like, I don't have time to do this again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, so yeah. maybe I'll go back to it at some point, but anyway. Indeed. You know so, what? What I'll do is I'll just post this episode. There you <laughs> for go. The, for those of you talking about Sea Cleaner the other week, listen to this. There you go. All right. So when we're talking about patching, we're talking about things like Windows 7 that's not supposed to get any patches, which was big news this week. Mm -hmm. And the ironic part of it that Windows 10 did get a big patch <laughs> in the same week. So here, here's the key piece, though, is this particular problem, they did not identify it existing in Windows 7. Yeah. But six months from now, it may, and they're not going to patch it. Yeah. Then what you going to do? Well, there was one really, really bad one that they did find in XP that they did patch after the fact, but it was really soon. After the fact. So they would have probably patched this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. But six months from now, they're not. You know, they're yeah. like, we told you to get off the thing. We told you for <laughs> years to get off the thing. And this one is really bad. Mm -hmm. Like scary bad. Yeah, so bad. <laughs> How bad is it? It is so bad that the NSA notified Microsoft about it. Yeah. Yeah. The, you know, National Security Agency. <laughs> yeah. You know, the people that use security holes to. <laughs> yeah. To, uh, mm, shall we say, listen and learn. <laughs> yeah. There you go. They they would normally use this kind of stuff to attack people. And and they are running around trying to get as much press as possible. We We told Microsoft about this one. You know, the, the, those other ones that, are, <laughs> that have been released, you know, and we, we talked about it at that time. And you can see that malware jump happened because they had all of this little kit mm -hmm. and somebody released it into public. Yes. Yes. So once that was released, ever since then, now they, they've kind of been on the hot seat about if you're using any hidden stuff, that you know could be used against us. Hello? You better tell us. <laughs> yeah. Well, not only that, but, you know, I don't know about you, but I got phone calls from HHS saying, hey, you need to patch this stuff. Phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> well, but they did. They issued an alert that's, uh, you know, telling people, you know, please load this patch. It's hugely important. I've never seen that happen. No, I, I haven't either. That they, you know, did a specific one and, you know, everybody everywhere is trying to make sure the word gets out before this thing is used. And I saw, I, I haven't had a chance to read all of it, but in, in a very, uh, you know, very small way, the bottom line is the error, the, uh, the vulnerability is within the cryptographic the the way that it tries to make in, encrypt the conversations mm -hmm. uh, between your windows system and other systems and there's a hole in that so that you can actually peek into the conversation and change it cool and uh <laughs> yeah it's awesome and somebody rick rolled the nsa website or something <laughs> uh, doing it so uh, <laughs> yeah look that up. yeah yeah yeah, uh, Rick Rowland is, it's a thing. 
<laughs> I remember Rick Astley. I love that song back in the day. Yeah. So uh, it was a party song. There's memories to it. So we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> the fact that you have memories after a party shocks me. <laughs> hey, now. <laughs> Yeah, it involves a convertible, a road trip with a bunch of friends. There's a long story there. Anyway, same thing when uh, Girls Just Want to Have Fun came out. There's a, <laughs> there's another one that's uh, – and that one. <laughs> anyway. Do the Humpty um, Dance. <laughs> do what? Did you, did you do the Humpty Dance? Humpty <laughs> Dance. <laughs> nah. All right. So <laughs> – Anyway, let's get back to the seriousness of this Windows 10 issue. But the bottom line here is, if if seriously, if you are not certain that this has been handled on all your Windows 10 machines right now, you literally need to pull over and call somebody. <laughs> or stop what you're doing, pause this, and call somebody to confirm that it has happened. Don't just assume it. Mm-hmm. Oh, IT takes care of that. You know what? I trust that David's taking care of it, but I'd call him and ask him mm -hmm. if he was handling my machines. David, have you taken care of it? Um, we uh, we have it on our radar. Uh, we have to whitelist it first. Yep, to um, force so, it through. Yep. So as soon as this uh, came out the other day, uh, we went ahead and started tracking the whitelisting process because that happens through a third party. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and it probably will be released, you know, if not over the weekend, then, you know, first of the week. Yeah. So they said 10 days. Yeah. They recommend you get it done in 10 days. Yep. If you're listening to this, it's been more than 10 days. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm like wrestling with, you know, our equipment, making sure everything's handled. So definitely... You want to know. You want to call IT and say, what's the plan? Do you have this done? And and we'll get to the reason that you need to call in just a second. But it, it is an indication when they start sending stuff out that says this is urgent. That says a lot because there are patches that are sent out on a very regular basis that are listed as you know, high or critical security issues, no yeah. one ever sends a notice about. Yeah, I mean, we don't hear from HHS about them and NSA about them. Exactly. So, you know, we'll hear from a lot of different sources. And, like, for example, there's several VPN compromises that have been going on. Mm -hmm. And we're not talking about fly-by-night stuff. We're talking, uh, you know, what was it, Fortinet and... Yeah, some enterprise level VPN. Yeah, I mean, we're not, yeah, it's Palo Alto has an advisory, Fortinet, there's a ton of advisories out. And there is NSA guidance on even how to recover from a VPN compromise. Yeah. So just, we're not talking about just the software on your computer, but the server you're connecting to. Yeah. Just imagine for those people that use all the free stuff. I know. <laughs> Speaking of that, there's also a, uh, a uh, severe flaw published uh, that's found in four open source VNC solutions. And I, I don't know, do you ever use VNC? I mean, the minute uh, I see it on a computer, I'm like, burp, burp, burp. Yeah, it was, it was a big thing back in the day, you know, because yeah. it, it was kind of other than, you know, remote desktop through Windows. It was really the only other software you can use to do that. Um, except for was it PC Anywhere? I think was the yeah, first one of the first commercially available. Uh, but yeah. yeah, we're talking a long time ago. But yeah, it was like, hey, I found a free way to uh, remotely connect to a computer through my dial up. <laughs> and so and yeah, I used dial to use, up literally. I know. So I used to use VNC a lot, but no, nowadays when I see it, and I have seen companies use it, like you know, putting it on their their customers' computers, and they use that as their remote support solution. And I'm like, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, but it's free. It is free. But the bottom line is uh, there are multiple, you know, iterations of this where people have made their own version of it. Yeah, it's open that source. It has some different features using the open source. And uh, so 
there's like you load it on. It's like PC anywhere that many people understand. You load it on the computer, and then it lets you connect to it. Uh, very straightforward, but that part on the computer is considered the server part, and that has a flaw in it. Mm-hmm. So if you get in and take over that, there's is some vulnerabilities, you know, that that can they can run just. Let's just say if they get in that way, they could just start running anything on there and take control of that computer. Yep. So, yeah. yeah so, not good. There's, yeah. <laughs> and it's on both ends. There's a little bit of the problem here, a little bit of the problem there. Uh, home routers, uh, they have alerts, you know. Oh, yeah. So, if you're using D Link router at your house, they've had a big one. And, yeah. These things are being announced all, all the time. The time. Mm-hmm. Somebody's got to pay attention in order to get it, and that's why everybody's blasting this one out because they know people don't pay attention. Yeah. Well, some of that stuff, too, has to go into the you know the category of shadow IT. You know, when, oh, yeah. when you got a person that's working for you and they're just tech savvy enough, and they're like, you know what? I'd love to have remote access to my computer from home. Next yeah, thing you know, I'm load VNC. Exactly. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> Which is so, a good idea. You know, that's why it's a good reason to get a list of software that's loaded on those computers from time to yeah. time and review it. It's absolutely necessary to know what to expect. And when you see something odd, ask mm-hmm. because it is indeed something that could bite you in the booty yeah i I don't know why twice in one episode i almost said that so (laughs) yeah but you know some it people might say well vnc has nothing to do with hipaa (laughs) this is why we're telling you it all has to do with hipaa (laughs) (laughs) all right so there are you know and as we're talking about i mean clearly i mean adobe had a recent batch of updates oracle the database company had a huge patch of batch of updates, and often your software vendor is managing that. Not mm-hmm. your IT people have no idea whether or not you're getting Oracle patches right. in most cases. So you've got to make sure this gets back to vetting the vendors and mm-hmm. asking the vendors how are you managing security, because that assumption is what gets you. Because they'll always say, "Well, here's the reason why we didn't do it." Right. And then there's crickets because that's it. That's all they have to say. Like when the Equifax uh, the CEO testified before Congress and in this giant organization blamed one dude. <laughs> one dude didn't do what he was supposed to do to make sure that this patch was loaded. Mm-hmm. Really? It relies on one dude. <laughs> Yeah. All those people. If you believe it, I don't know. No, it's, you know, who are we going to throw under the bus? And there's one dude still sitting there working. You! <laughs> Come here, what's your name? <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you didn't make the meeting. Uh, it's it's so-and-so. So, But what I find interesting is that, you know, we had one across, same problem. You know, when that thing hit in 2017, 2017, 2018, Anyway, when WannaCry hit, it spread around the world in it was like a wildfire on networks, mm-hmm. and uh, and the U.S. was spared, but still hit. They didn't get hit as bad as they did in Europe. And at that point, people were just watching it; and they couldn't do anything about it because if the patches had been loaded on these Windows computers that came out, the patch came out like three months before, and if it had been loaded. They weren't impacted. Yep. But if you had one computer, that's all it took, one on the network that uh, didn't have the patch, then you're going to get hit. Mm -hmm. And so at that point, people went to Microsoft and said, what's up? (laughs) (laughs) And there's a blog post that's patching as a social responsibility (laughs) that Microsoft put out. And they were announcing a new partnership between this, uh, them, NIST, who we talk about all the time, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, and the National Cybersecurity Center of Excellence. And 
actually, they're doing some really cool stuff there. And there's some stuff I'm, I'm waiting for it to get out of draft because things do change even on that final draft so that we can use it. I mean, it's some great stuff. But uh, they said, you know, the plan in our partnership is to help make it, quote, easier for organizations to plan, implement, and improve an enterprise patch management strategy, quote. Hmm. Okay. Okay. And, uh, you know, they admit it was watching WannaCry race around the world due to an uninstalled patch. And then they go on to say one of the interesting points in the article, you know, it it, it was – To me, this thing, it really hit the nail on the head why we have such an issue with this. And they actually sat down and talked to enterprises and said, why didn't you load the patch we sent you? (laughs) Hmm. What a great idea. Hmm. Let's ask people why that wasn't done. Don't just assume somebody didn't do their job. And, uh, you know, in these meetings, they said uh, when they actually asked, why they aren't patching quickly enough. So there was three-month time frame. They said, the, while the discussions mostly went in expected directions, this part's interesting, we were surprised at how many challenges organizations had on processes and standards, including what sort of testing should we, be a- we actually be doing for patch testing and mm-hmm. how fast should I be patching my system? <laughs> mm-hmm. This articulated need for a good reference processes was further validated by observing that a common practice for, quote, testing a patch <laughs> before a deployment, and I love this, often consisted solely of asking whether anyone else had had any issues with the patch in an online forum. <laughs> yeah, I'm just about to tell you exactly where they went to do that, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. Yeah, so... I mean, we talked about what goes on in those forums where the IT folks are talking. And, you know, you check on the forum and see if anybody's said anything about a problem. And if you don't get any, then um, maybe I'll load it. Yeah. Anybody else get sick when they ate here? <laughs> <laughs> anybody throw up from here? Uh, you know, and and so it's uh, social engineering at its best. Um but they did say that the that uh, they said that what they need to resolve is that applying patches is a critical part of protecting your system, and we learned that while it isn't as easy as security departments think, it isn't as hard as IT organizations think. Right. Now let that sit for a minute on one of those forums. It'd <laughs> <laughs> uh, be scathing, but. It needs to be happening on a regular basis. They're saying, why did it take so long? And and to me, you know, that it's crazy that uh, we are not solving this problem quicker based on what we've already seen happening. Yeah. And so the vast number that Oracle had, the ones with the VPN, so that tells you, you need to be doing it more often, and there's even alerts that, you know, with these VPN things where they've talked about nation-state attacks. And with what's going on in the world today, you know, they, they've kind of tried to downplay what the Iranians can do, and, you know, they've claimed they're going to attack. But frankly, I'm not so much worried about them as the people who are going to take their side. Yeah. That are in these uh uh, attack gangs and you know just as much as there was anonymous coming out saying hey we're going to attack so and so because we feel like they're not doing the right thing that's one thing but they've kind of gotten quiet the other folks that are doing a similar thing and saying you know what we're taking or you know another country side between countries they don't come out and make an announcement right just all of a sudden and Wanna Cry was one of those things. It was absolutely a Russian attack on the Ukraine. Uh, was involved in that as far and not Pet you definitely mm-hmm. was mm. the same. So that being said, you've got all your software to worry about, not just Windows. Say that again. <laughs> 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 yeah, really? Uh <laughs> <laughs> it's like 
You have all your software to worry about, not just Windows. Can we say that three times? <laughs> I know. I just want to make sure that gets out there. <laughs> yeah, you really should worry about all your software, not just Windows. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. Now, you, um, when you say all, what do you mean? <laughs> no, which is this is the one that I love is when we come and we ask for an inventory, you know, because this is what you're supposed to do in an assessment, and and so I say to IT who has got HIPAA handled, uh, I would like uh, inventory of all the devices. Well, here's a list of the computers. Okay, but I, I need an inventory of all the devices. Well, here's a list of computers. Not all the devices. <laughs> See, so we start in that loop in the beginning. I need an inventory of all the software. Well, why would you want that? There's so much software scattered about. We don't know what all's out there. <laughs> I, I need a list of all the software. <laughs> well, this is why you need them to make sure the devices are getting firmware updates because there are patches on those firewalls and uh, access points and all those things. And you need to understand. You don't have to understand the patching process as far as here's how you load them. You don't have to understand all these CVE, CVSS writings and, and details and blah, blah, blah. What you have to understand is how your IT team makes those decisions and the cadence. And the cadence is how often are they making sure things are being patched. And then a really, really, really important piece <laughs> is what are they patching? Mm -hmm. Hello? Dude, no I've one had, ever asked. I've had vendors literally tell me, don't patch our software or don't patch this piece of software because it will break. <laughs> They've got to stop. Uh, it's crazy. I mean. You know, that uh, stuff's got to stop. But, um, you know, the, to, to bring this up, though, it, it is important to understand, especially when you have outsourced IT, that – Sometimes we have the conversation with clients and they say, wow, we're doing great. You know, we haven't called you all month. And, and then, you know, this goes on for maybe two or three months. And then you start having conversations about, you know, can we, can we find some way to cut down the cost of IT? Because we're not calling you. And I'm like, dude, do you have any idea how much work <laughs> we're doing for you on the back end? It, mm -hmm. It's a crazy amount of work. Yeah. And, and so, you know, I bring that up just to say most people don't understand that just because you're not calling and your printer is, you know, not broke or whatever, if your IT company is doing proper security and support for you, there is still a massive amount of work that has to be done, whether you call them or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of like if everything's working, we don't need IT. Uh, how do you think everything's working? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're doing their job. Right. And and to suddenly say, well, you know, we're going to stop doing that because it's all working fine. You know, my car runs great. Maybe I'm not going to do any oil changes or have the transmission <laughs> stuff changed. Yeah. It, it's, there's never a problem until there's a problem. Exactly. <laughs> and at that point, it's too late. Mm -hmm. That's that security's too much until it's not enough. Yep. So there has to be a middle ground, and you have to know who's in charge of reviewing the patches, making sure they're loaded, and you need to cover not just your computers, but your firewalls, your routers, the medical devices, you know, your applications for your software. They, their Citrix has a big bug in some of their stuff. It, it's it, that they're patching. So there's a lot of this going on, and everybody just assumes that somebody else is taking care of it. And yeah. that doesn't exclude IT. They assume somebody else is taking care of some other stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean, in these environments, I don't know that any outsourced IT company anyway, I don't know that they're handling, I don't know anybody who's handling 100% of all of it. It's just too, no. There's too much out there, and there's too many vendors who have their hands in the mix, and there's things that uh, are kind of outside the purview of what IT is handling for you. Um, I, I just don't, I don't know any it company and that includes my own that mm -hmm. handles 100% of the patching for every piece of software or hardware you have. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like the risk analysis. That's one of those scans. And we ask you about your policies and procedures, but never did I ask you about your EHR, your practice management system, how you're securing those. Do you have the security set on those? 
what about you know a long list of your medical devices and and do do they connect to the network at any time and you know a, a digital camera mm-hmm. that's it that's all you need is a digital camera and an SD card that somebody takes home and plugs into a laptop and brings it back we told that story yep so it, it, you know and, and you're not the camera is not supposed to leave the building it didn't <laughs> you're right <laughs> Right. And my home PC is just fine. It is not. It infected <laughs> the whole office. So you got to have that meeting, though, and have a list. And, and if you're an IT vendor, you want to do this. You want to say, here's our box, and we're staying in it. Mm-hmm. You know, we're, we're going to do these things. If you want us to do some other things, we got to look at whether we can even do it. But you want to know who's managing that. Oh, yeah. And then to determine, you know, you know, are they managing it in an effective way? Yeah, because if you know, if I have a client and, I, and they say, "Well, our EHR company is handling our EHR platform, and they're doing all the updates," okay, well, I mean, I'm out, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, somebody else is doing it, and you know, and then when something happens, you know, I potentially could get an email going, "Why wasn't this getting patched?" I'm like, <laughs> Yes. Uh, it's a good question. Why don't you ask your HR it's company? Not, it's not on my to-do list. <laughs> I know. It, but that yeah. goes back to, you know, the clear clear lines of communication and understanding who's doing what and and all the moving parts. And and everybody wants to just assume this is being handled, but the bottom line is you're the one on the hook. Mm-hmm. You know, the IT vendors that have been hit and they ghosted their uh, you know, their their clients, their the clients are the one out there telling their patients. You know, our our IT vendor bailed on us after we got hit with ransomware. Yeah, you know, the clients are the one out there in at the AMCA breach. Our our vendor wasn't protecting their network and monitoring things, and now you know Quest. When I talk about AMCA, no one knows who that is. But if I say you remember when Quest and LabCorp and all those, oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> so that. That it's you. It's on you in the mm-hmm. end. It doesn't matter who you assumed was doing what. Right. So there you have it. All righty. Well, I think we learned a couple things. <laughs> <laughs> patch, patch, patch. Mm-hmm. Patching, patching, patching. Yeah. Well, the you know, it, it all starts with understanding what needs to be patched and who's handling it. And so start there. Because I think you'll be um, shocked. <laughs> Like, when, in, indeed. When you start there going down that list. rabbit hole. Yeah. yeah. But you do need that list that we keep talking about. Your inventory, your hardware and software inventory, absolutely essential to making sure this is done properly. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because we've, we've got clients with environments where they have a Wi-Fi access point that a vendor, another vendor put in because of some type of refrigeration um, unit that they have. Uh-huh. Or some other type of monitoring something that they've done. I mean, just so much. I mean, even the copy machines have firmware on them. And, and is that being uh-huh. patched? Yeah, our copy company's doing it. Well, really, are you checking on that? They're giving, are they giving you, right. Are they giving you a report? Are they doing something, anything? IT's not keeping up with that, probably. And don't ask the salesperson. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I mean, anything that's connected to your environment, Anything that's connected to the internet, especially, um, yeah, you've got to ask these questions. And yes, it's a it's a job. <laughs> it's a lot of work to it. Well, but the work that you have to do is just making sure it's actually being taken care of. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, it, you yeah, nothing <laughs> you can do. <laughs> it's just, you've got to make sure you understand who's doing what and protecting your business. Yep. All right. Think That's all would... I have to say about that. Uh, all right. I've been in Savannah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, where you can go see the bench. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> all righty, folks. That has been our show for today. In case you didn't catch it, <laughs> all software <laughs> has to do with HIPAA. <laughs> Just saying it one more time. Uh, all, all software right. has the potential to be, you know, your Achilles heel. Yep. There you go. All right. So remember, follow us. Do all kind of other crazy stuff. 
on social media. <laughs> Rate us on our podcast and out. We always need your help to spread the word. And uh, as always, you can send your questions and ideas to Donna. She loves getting those emails. <laughs> so for Donna and myself, remember that HIPAA is not about compliance. It's about patient care. You've been listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast, hosted by Donna Grendel and David Sims. The show created to help you with HIPAA. For more information or to ask us a question, visit our website at helpmewithhipaa.com. Neither Donna Grendel or David Sims are attorneys, and they do not offer binding legal advice concerning regulatory compliance. The information in this podcast should not be relied upon or construed as legal advice in any way. Consult your attorney for legal advice concerning compliance with HIPAA regulations.